Look, another issue that's been making the headlines, but because I guess in terms of our oh, cultural norms these days, smoking, it's really hard to find anyone who's going to support the tobacco industry or support smoking. It's just bad, bad, bad. Um, and I say that as a tobacco addict. I don't call myself a smoker. I'm a tobacco addict. Um, but there are big changes ahead. And, of course, the government's got this sinking lid on who can legally buy tobacco and continues to tighten regulations about the retailing of, of, of tobacco. As a, t- a tobacco addict, I can tell you it is harder and harder to find places where you can actually buy tobacco and fewer and few places sell tobacco. And it's hard to know because they're not allowed to advertise the fact that they sell tobacco or advertise that there's cigarettes in a shop. You look for the white, nondescript cupboard thing that they dispense the tobacco from. Um, But one group, sector group in retail that sell a lot of fags are dairies. And um, going down to the dairies for a packet of cigarettes is as kiwi as throwing a gumboot. Um, I can remember as a kid, and Jesus, it never happened now, We had a dairy down the corner of the road in Grace Road, or it's a gas station, and in the mornings, on the few uh, mornings I can remember when Dad was actually home on a Saturday morning, uh, one or two of us kids would be dispatched down to the dairy to buy Dad a packet of the uh, a newspaper and a packet of Paul Moore Plain. Terrible things they were. Paul Moore Plain came in a soft packet. Um, But what impact on an already beleaguered dairy sector, and that's corner dairy sector, not dairy like as in milking cows. What impact are these regulations uh, going to have? Well, to find out more, we are joined now by Sonny uh, Kaushal. He's the chair of the Dairy Owners Association, and you've probably met him here on the platform before, talking about the Ram Raid. Sonny, welcome to the platform again. Nice to have you with us. Kia ora, and Happy New Year to you. Okay. Sonny, uh, firstly, I just want to get a feeling from you as one of the few places left um, selling tobacco, how important is the tobacco trade to your members in terms of their turnover and profitability? Uh, look, uh, tobacco is, is not profitable, uh, uh, actually, to um, our retailers. Uh, and but what happens, the people who come to buy uh, those cigarettes or tobacco, they also buy a lot of other stuff. So currently the tobacco is, is nearly 50% of the revenue for the businesses. But more important is that the thing, things that they buy, are the other groceries, milk and bread and other things. Okay, so, so the tobacco can get people into the shop and then they can spend money on other stuff that's more profitable. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, and, and, and we, you know, we, we all want smoke-free uh, New Zealand. And now the question has been that the dairies are, are, you know, actually they're not the problem. That's what we have been telling the government. The dairies are the part of the solution to implement the smoke-free legislation or the plan. You know, these 6,000 platforms could well be used by the government because these dairy owners, they know those smokers by name, by face, uh, uh, closely. They can help uh, in implementing uh, this program and taking those people uh, off of, from smoking. But the way the legislation is being run, suddenly slashing uh, those 6,000 outlets to 600 uh, without any... Um, yeah. Now, uh, just get, uh, and, and and explain the, the particular regulatory tri- uh, change that we're talking about here, because people outside the industry may be unaware of it. Right. So uh, in the legislation, uh, so the government want to slash the outlets. Uh, uh, currently, there are over 6,000 outlets, including dairies and uh, those service stations who are selling the cigarettes. So the government want to do it 600 nationwide. So they would uh, license. They would license a maximum of 600 venue or businesses in New Zealand to sell tobacco products. That's correct. That's that's what the the uh, uh, minister has proposed and is coming up. Now the the question here arises: How they have come to a number of six hundred? So six hundred. It looks like a very political figure. As we are trying to put our heads around uh, how uh, this uh, uh, um, distribution of six hundred uh, outlets would be New Zealand wide, 
and uh, I have looked at the the map which is released by uh, uh, the government. It looks like a, a dart game work. So uh, we are failing to understand the uh, uh, the uh, science behind this one. Okay, how would you become one of the chosen six hundred tobacco retailers? Uh, that's a, a multi-million dollar question. We have no idea. The government has not told anyone, uh, and and there is there's no uh, criteria for that one has been announced as yet. Um, so what we could see is uh, uh, rather than those 5,400 dairies and service stations yeah. who would lose the right to sell the cigarettes, they would uh, uh, obviously be, be the biggest losers uh, in this game, whereas the 600 uh, outlets whosoever are given the license to sell, it's like a, a multi-million lotto jackpot for them. Okay, okay so because they, then, they get, then they get the increased foot traffic because, mind you, they're not going to be able to advertise, Sonny, I think even under the existing legislation, that they are an approved or registered tobacco retailer. That, that, that's correct. And also, there's a, there's a fear that there would be a lot more armed hold-ups. Right. Because who is going to deliver those many cigarettes to, uh, uh, say, one given outlet? And then how that person or, or the business is going to do the banking? Mm. Yeah, I get you. I get you absolutely, Sonny. Sonny, the other interesting thing is, despite, you know all the nasty pictures on the cigarette packets that you cannot see uh, a tobacco advertising or a sign in a dairy, people are still smoking, aren't they? Uh, the, the, the smoking is, is coming down uh, uh, slowly. Uh, so we have seen uh, uh, in the last couple of years, uh, now the smoking is, is down to 8%. So uh, the goal uh, for smoke-free out here uh, was to bring it down to 5%. So basically the market is setting itself. It's, it, it's reducing slowly because there are a lot more people, they're moving to um, the, the likes of vapes, uh, mm. which are less harmful and they are also not that expensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sonny, where is this proposal to, so, re to proposal reduce? Where is it at present in the legislative process or is, is it just a discussion at the moment? No, so so the so they have passed the legislation uh, last year uh, around Christmas time. Now the implementation would start from uh, uh, from next year, uh, but we still have the questions. We asked for uh, the uh, meeting uh, with uh, Dr. Barrel, which we haven't uh, got as yet, uh, and also we wanted to tell her the ground reality, uh, yeah. how this can be done, and and also or what it means to uh, to to all of uh, us. I mean, that us would mean the, the businesses, the, the smokers, and also the, the, the population yeah. in, uh, of New Zealand, yeah. whereas the government is, uh, is the big winner. Uh, yeah. you know, in so the, they are taxes. talking about only having 600 places in That's the correct. entire country where you can buy cigarettes. That's very correct. That's and, correct. And I'm sorry. When I think about that, that's insane. That is a multi-million dollar windfall for 600 businesses and the given that we have... Now, when you say there are 6,000 people doing it at the moment, it's just 6,000 dairies because we've got a factor in convenience stores, we've, we've got a, a factor in uh, gas stations which sell tobacco as well. Are they all included in this plan to reduce outlets? Yes, yes. Wow, wow. Have you talked and to any other political parties? By the way, we've got an election this year, Sonny. Have the Nats yes, said where they stand or the Act said where they stand on this? Look, I mean, all these parties, they want the smoke-free program to go ahead. But uh, now uh, I've spoken to, to uh, obviously, uh, Dr. Reti, you have heard uh, yep. uh, last year in, in the parliament and also ACT Party and other parties. So so they, but but they they do not believe this is the right way uh, as, as Labour is trying to push this uh, uh, forward. You know, there need to be some sensible decisions that need to be taken. We also need to look at uh, how many businesses are going to lose their livelihood and we need to provide the solutions to them. To yeah. Or how in they, a free market, uh, suddenly they just go out of business. They would go out of business unless they, we, we have some solutions for them.
All right, I and, hear you. And, and also, the, if you look at if you look at the the map, how it is randomly uh, picked up those six hundred locations, you would be shocked to see. I mean, for example, how can Auckland end up with one third of the shops than Otago and Southland, despite having four times of the population? All right. And you would also find the, some some uh, uh, um, outlets where there's no population at all. Uh, we do not understand if the sheep are going to smoke over there. <laughs> Sorry, this is a really interesting issue, and I think it's an interesting one because, you know, tobacco as a product has clearly been, and, and, and for good reason, ha has been demonised. People are still addicted to it, like me. People still do smoke. It is still legally available, but this level of regulation uh, seems crazy, and it seems dangerous for your members and their financial well-being. I thank you very much indeed for your time this morning, Sonny, and please keep in contact with us if there are any developments. We will continue to, to cover this issue. Thank you so much. Cheers. Sonny Kajal, the uh, chair of the Dairy Owners Association. So I didn't realise that legislation would be passed, and that's a shame on me, but passed just before Christmas in that sort of orgy of urgency uh, where the government sneaks stuff through. So we're going to go from around 6,000 tobacco outlets in the country to 600 and the government is going to grant you the status of being a registered... and the government's going to decide proportionately where all those outlets are, but then how do you become one of the chosen few that can sell the fags? Um, really interesting. Sean, Sonny is correct. When I'm on my way home from the pub on Friday, I stop in at my local dairy around the corner and get a pack of darts. Also, while I'm there, I'll grab a bag of chips and maybe a bottle of milk if I need it. If I wasn't stopping there for a packet of smokes, I wouldn't be shopping at all. Selling smokes does bring in business for small players. Yeah, I don't think there can be any doubt of that, and I know that personally. Um, Sean, will the 600 proposed accredited fag vendors have to be co-governed? I don't know. I'm worried now. We've, we have no co-governance at the platform. We are failing terribly in our treaty obligations. Sean, I can see it now. 50% of tobacco outlets will have to be owned by Māori. Isn't that in the treaty? The notion of dropping to 600 outlets is bloody nonsense. It's not a notion. It's the law. Smoking is coming down anyway. Yep, yep. Um, Sean, and everyone's got the same theme here. Sean, after listening to your interview with Sonny this morning, I presume you would have to sign up to the Treaty of Waitangi to be one of 600 outlets to sell cigarettes. So division will mark on, says Ron. Sean, rather than sad to yet again hear dairy owners defend their rights to sell products that harm people, those retailers need to invent themselves, reinvent themselves and get past this unfortunate aspect of their history, says Steve. Well, Steve, some people say sugar's bad for you and they sell Coke and soft drinks and they sell raw sugar as well. Come on, they're in business, they sell stuff people need. If people didn't need it or want it, they wouldn't sell it because there'd be no market for it. I don't think dairy should be the front line of, you know, politically correct consumerism. It's a free market. Um, Sean, look to history, re-cigarettes, prohibition never works. Thank you, George.